Speak these words in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The title of today's sermon is Relationships Are Difficult. Relationships are difficult. And I'm going to look at how this topic plays out in today's gospel reading. But first, I would like to welcome the university choir from Sewanee. I was a student at the University of the South from 1997 to 2001. I was lay chaplain from 2001 to 2004. Goodness, my wife is from the class of 2007, my brother-in-law is from the class of 2000, and my sister-in-law is Mary Elizabeth Benton, currently a sophomore at Sewanee. So, All Saints Chapel is near and dear to my heart, and I am so thankful the university choir has made the Cathedral of St. Philip a part of their choir pilgrimage. Thank you all for being here today. And since you all are visiting, and the title of my sermon is Relationships Are Difficult, it seems like an appropriate place to begin is with the difficult relationship I had with my sophomore roommate. Jeremy and I were assigned to be assistant proctors in Tuckaway. Tuckaway is a dorm at Sewanee. We lived in Tuckaway 121, that nice big room at the front. Jeremy was a devout Roman Catholic from New England. And I was an enthusiastic Episcopalian from the hills of Tennessee. What neither of us knew is that we both were discerning a call to the priesthood. However, the first few weeks we lived together, we fought like cats and dogs. And then we tended to bring religion into the argument, and that only made things worse, as you all know. One day we had a disagreement about something, and that disagreement turned into another debate about the Protestant Reformation. And in the midst of that fight, I took issue with all of Jeremy's icons that he had hanging on his side of the rooms And he made some remark about Episcopalians being fascinated with sex. (laughs) Ooh, you can only imagine how that fight played out. It got personal. I got mad. Then I decided to get vindictive. So on my next trip down to the Winchester Walmart... I went down the mountain to the Winchester Walmart and I decided to go to the section that carries art. Walmart art. (laughs) And I am ashamed to say, I'm ashamed to stand here in this pulpit today and say that I purchased a poster of the most airbrushed swimsuit model you have ever seen. Let your mind wander. I purchased this poster, I went back to my dorm room, I placed her on my side of the room, and I called her the other Mary. (laughs) As a way to balance the icons of the Virgin Mary on the other side of the room. You can only imagine (laughs) his reaction to my Walmart acquisition. The other Mary led to a few more weeks of fighting. And then we came to this realization that Sewanee wasn't going to let us change roommates. That wasn't an option. So we were going to have to make it work. And that meant learning how to navigate a difficult relationship. So what did we do? We had to stay in relationship. We had to learn about the other person. We had to go deeper. Jeremy is now a Roman Catholic monk and priest in Italy. And I, of course, am an Episcopal priest. And I can't speak for him this morning, but I can speak for me and say that through the grace of God, 
that difficult relationship became one of the most holy relationships in my life. He became a spiritual companion, an important figure in my own journey. Now, we all know something about difficult relationships. For some, it's a relationship with your spouse or significant other. For others, it's a difficult relationship with your parents or with your children. Or perhaps you're in a difficult relationship with a friend or a roommate. Whatever the case, we all know something about difficult relationships. The woman at the well knows something about this also. She has been married five times. The woman knows something about difficult relationships, and in going to the well, she ends up encountering another difficult relationship. Let's look at what happens. Jesus is sitting by the well with no bucket. The woman approaches Jesus, and Jesus does the unthinkable. He engages the Samaritan woman in conversation. Give me a drink, he says. She replies, why are you talking to me? He goes, hey, if you knew who I was, if you knew who I was, and what I was capable of doing, you would give me a drink. And then she looks at him. You can imagine the scene. She looks at him with a face that says, well, why are you here without a bucket? A condescending look, perhaps. So let's take a step back. I don't know about you Sawani students, but the beginning of this conversation reminds me a little of talking to women in college. Jesus hadn't said but 10 words. He's insulted her a few times, and he's dug himself into a very deep hole. And he's going to continue to dig, because notice what he keeps doing. He keeps talking about her past relationships. Not a smart thing to do if you meet a woman at the well. Now, if you are at the well, or if you were at the well, for you all, it would be a bar in Buckhead, and for you all, it would be the corner of a fraternity house. If you were at the well, and you saw this relationship or this exchange taking place, you would probably say to yourself, this is going to crash and burn. Doesn't stand a chance. But Jesus is Jesus, right? He knows how to dig himself out of a grave. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I meant that as a joke, of course, but I also say it with some seriousness. We don't talk about Jesus digging himself out of a grave. We talk about Jesus going through the grave, right? Through the grave. Jesus is going to show us that sometimes the most important thing you can do in a difficult relationship is to go deeper, to go deeper, to go through it. You all know something about the woman at the well. You know something about her because there are relationships in your life that are difficult. There are relationships that you want to ignore and walk away from. And sometimes there are relationships that you need to walk away from. There are difficult things in your life, difficult and painful things that you do not want to examine. Yet what does Jesus do? Jesus keeps bringing the Samaritan woman back to those difficult places back to those difficult relationships and calling her to go deeper, calling her to acknowledge a deeper thirst. Jesus wants you to see that sometimes the difficult, sometimes the difficult can be an invitation to the holy. Yes, there are places in our lives where the difficult is really an invitation to the holy. One of the last prayers in the marriage service, 
One of the last prayers is one of my favorite prayers in the Book of Common Prayer. It's a prayer that says that we are to make the way of the cross to be the way of life. We pray for the way of the cross to be the way of life in our relationships. At some point, all relationships encounter difficulty. Unfortunately, some relationships are so difficult and painful, they end in death. They literally end at the cross. But others have the opportunity to allow that difficulty in their relationship to take them through the cross and into a new way of being. The way of the cross becomes the way of life for all relationships. Because it is there that we realize that no matter how difficult and that even in loss, there is an invitation to holiness. The difficulty is an invitation to holiness. Amen.